بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our prayer and our siyam and our dua May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in guidance, in knowledge and in yaqeen The Qur'an وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقُرْآنُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, send as we have said this Quran as Rahma uh, Lil Alameen, the mercy to the words and the Prophet وسلم, is the mercy to the words. And as a believer in this blessed month, we have by obligation to review that, to reappreciate these gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the one who does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we already have said, for the gift he has bestowed upon us, and mainly the gift of Islam and the gift of the Iman and the gift of the Quran and the gift of the best of the creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be your prophet, your messenger, therefore one will be sinking into the darkness. And the values of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are infinite. And one to talk about in Surah Al-Baqarah or what we have recited from the values and the virtues that the believer need to, uh, you know, to, to clothe himself or to immerse himself and herself into such values. Uh, it is really an obligation, but is infinite values. One of the great values that we want to share with you today is reflecting on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your wali. Is your wali. We have read it in Surah uh, Al-Baqarah uh, in the first rak'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu. Allahu waliyu alladhina amanu. Allah is the guardians. Allah is the ally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one. What it means is wali. Wali the one who care about you. The one who watch over you. The one who provide for you. The one who is taking care of you. The one who showered you with you, his mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that he's been taking care of you since before your existence. Then you come to the womb of your mother. Then you came to this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be showering you with his blessing, embracing you in his mercy, guiding you your steps till you get to the grave. And after you come out of the grave, and then he will remind you of his gifts upon you when you meet him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاجْعَلْنَا اللَّهُمَّ مِنَ الْمُفْلِحِينَ يَا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified the realm of the wilaya. He said, اللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ He's bringing them out from the darkness to the light. And the darkness today, subhanAllah, is getting darker as in the society we live in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, so in the beginning of the Qur'an, as a believer, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caring about you. Whatever darkness is around you, whatever darkness, layers upon layers of darkness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you to take you out of this darkness. However, the great value when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your wali, and he's the one who's sending his blessing on you, and he's making his angels, alayhi salam, to ask forgiveness for you, قَالَ هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَلِّ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ So it is, subhanAllah, it is a blessing that is covering and encompassing the whole cosmos. Yeah? Imagine, subhanAllah, you are going to sleep into your bed, and there is the angel's carrier of the throne making forgiveness for you. الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who carry the throne, they are celebrating the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, then he said, and they ask in forgiveness for the, for the believer. All this forgiveness, all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing is to take you out from the darkness. But if we lock ourselves in the darkness, then we will not be able to come out of it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you when you'll come to him. If you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you many steps. If you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to you running subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when we think about or reflect on this darkness, and especially the darkness that we 
live in all around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you from the darkness of the ignorance to the light of knowledge. The darkness of misguidance to the light of guidance. The darkness of heedlessness to the light of mindfulness, of dhikr. From the darkness of the womb of the mother that we are there to the light of this life. Allah take you from the darkness of the grave to the light of meeting him and from the light of the mercy to greater light which with this the eternity. So when you think of it, this process of bringing us from darkness to light is the all your entire life. It's all your entire life. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the parable of the darkness, قَالَ أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لُجِّيٍّ يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِّن فَوْقِهِ سحاب. Now imagine uh, a, a night and a very uh, deep, you know, uh, sea that it has, you know, layers of, uh, of uh, waves and above the sea, as you said, there is a cloud so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us this, this layers of darkness. And when you get out your hand, you cannot see it, which is mean you do not have the perception of the truth. So whatever you are in darkness, whatever you think is the truth, then you're going to follow it. Why? Because you do not have light to see anything. So Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, gave us kind of decoding for us in a nice way, making the interpretation of this layer of darkness. So the light, the, the wave is... Uh, the first wave is got, like overwhelmed by the desire. So the desire is, comes like a wave that uh, drown you into the abyss of this, of this sea or this ocean. And subhanAllah, cover your mind, cover your eyes. And then another wave that it comes, what it has like the love of power, love of showing off, the love of this dunya. And all of that, subhanAllah, within the sea, which is this worldly life. And then you have the clouds, which is like the wrong and crooked belief. And those, subhanAllah, superstition and things that nothing have to do with the aqidah of the tawheed. And all this, subhanAllah, darkness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking you out of it if you just have the determination and the sincerity to get out of it. Because if you do not do it, then wal'iyadu billah, you sink and you find who the one who's going to be your wali, wal'iyadu billah, is the shaytan. That he always, qala ya'iduhum wa yumannihim, he's promising them, he's make them wishes, he give them like dreams and dreams in their mind. And all, subhanAllah, is nothing. Fa, how can we in Ramadan work on such a thing to make it as a path of life? The, the more you liberate yourself from the darkness, the better you understand this darkness, the better you understand the crookedness, the better you understand the system, so you can see it. You can see it. And then only happen when you have a strong belief. The signs of this strong belief comes in three. Is to have a tranquility into your heart. And certainty in your tawakkul. And sabr in time of difficulties. So if you look at these signs, that's how you're going to check your belief in your heart. And you're going to see or find out yourself that you are on the path of liberating yourself from the darkness with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this tranquility in the heart, it comes only with the dhikr of Allah. Look, Ibrahim being the friend of Allah, as we have mentioned today, and we read it today in Surah Al-Baqarah, he asked me, Allah, can I see how you resurrect or bring dead to life? And he told him, you don't believe. He said, I need that tranquility. I need more. I need it more. Imagine. I need it more. So if Ibrahim, Khalil rahman he's in need of more tranquility, and subhanAllah, as we are inclining to the dunya, to find itma'anan into the dunya. So if you have the tranquility embedded and attached to the dunya, then we are into the darkness without knowing. So al-itma'anan who check your tranquility, it need to come. So when you today, you pray and you go home, inshaAllah ta'ala, you feel good. 
That's a good sign. That's a good sign that he's starting. That's what is Ramadan for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Those who believe. And their heart finds satisfaction, assurance. With what? With the remembrance of Allah. So if we do not, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a special season, this month of Ramadan. So make your goal to find the satisfaction of your heart through the remembrance of Allah. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah. And if you have this satisfaction and peace into your heart, that it comes from the remembrance of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to increase your certainty when you make tawakkul, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the case of the believers uh, led by the Prophet sallallahu in Uhud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you and he will love you because when you are in case of difficulty and you say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, Allah send you more blessing and guide you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'as sabirin wa yuhibbu sabirin. Just before I finish, I give you an idea of such a greatness. In a personage in one of the great personality in Islam, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar was in the darkness. The latest action that he had before coming to Islam, he was just searching for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to kill him. And he read the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him. And Allah became the wali of Umar. And Umar strove. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala an became one of the greatest companions. And he is after Abi Bakr. And Umar became Khalifa. And Umar, when you ask justice, you ask, you talk about Umar. Because his name, subhanAllah, would become connected with justice. Umar, who used to, to worship, you know, his idol, he make it out, out of, his, you know, candy or out of food, and when he's hungry, he will eat the idol that he worshipped. He became, radiallahu ta'ala, an, the leaders of the nation, and the great role, example of humility to Allah, of modesty, and also of justice. And Umar, radiallahu ta'ala, an, to the end of his life, and his longing, and his working so hard to keep, you know, getting higher and higher into the path of the light. When Hafsa, when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, they came to him to ask him if he can change his appearance because the companion of one Allah ta'ala alayhim, they were kind of, you know, they cannot talk to Umar. He said, you know, maybe we have ambassadors or some messenger that came from other nation and we want you to, we want our leader to look nice. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had, had a qameez or a robe full of patches. So when they came to her, they said, you know, can you please talk to Umar? And then he reminded them. He said, are you asking me to do such a thing? And I want to join my dearest, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Abu Bakr. He said, look how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how he was. He was in tight situation. He didn't tie a rock on his stone, on his stomach, out of starving. He didn't do this. He didn't do this. So subhanAllah, to the point they were crying with him. He said, leave me alone. I only have these days to hold on them so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon by me the gift to join my dearest Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abi Bakr and the great companion. And this is as example for us. It is in your hand the key to get out of the darkness. And the darkness is not, is not subhanAllah, maybe we don't know what is darkness. But if you work on this Ramadan to have the peace in your heart coming from the dhikr of Allah, then we're going to see what is wrong with your own eyes. Then you're going to deny what is hurtful. Why? Because it is something that violates the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the meaning of wali and to be happy and to be thankful and grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is who our wali. And if your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your wali, who can become against you? Who can 
uh, you know, hurt you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَإِلَى الصَّلَاةِ يَرْحَمُ